Welcome to the Master Info Week of the Università della Svizzera Italiana. For the whole week, you will find useful resources such as a welcome from our rector, Professor Boas Erez, a campus tour, testimonials from both current students and alumni, and an overview of UZI's graduates' placement opportunities. You can watch a brief description of our students' services and a useful tutorial on how to fill the online application form. Now, you're about to attend a thorough presentation of the master structure and contents. You can ask us any question, academic or administrative related, through the chat below this video or through the form at the bottom of the page. After the presentation, we will answer all your questions during a live session with the director of the program and some guests. Thank you and enjoy. Hello. Good morning, everybody. I'm happy to present to you the Master in Digital Fashion Communication. I'm Lorenzo Cantoni, the uh, director of the Master, and I've designed it together with Dr. Nazaya Kalbaska, the program coordinator, and with colleagues in the Université Parion Panthéon Sorbonne in Paris, uh, Francesca Cominet. As you know, this master is offering a double degree. So, end of the program, you get a, a master degree from Sorbonne University and from UZI Università della Svizzera Italiana University. So, what is the overall context in which this master has been designed and uh, has been launched? The overall context is the so-called digital transformation. So. Uh, all the industries, and fashion is not at all an exception, have been deeply uh, transformed by digital technologies. And so, uh, the, uh, fashion companies are looking for people able to master um, the uh, digital trends and people who are at the same time not only uh, let's say surfing the digital waves, uh, but only able to understand what's happening right now in a long durée approach. So having long term uh, approach, uh, which takes into consideration social cultural processes. And additionally, people who are fully aware of ethical and sustainability issues, which are nowadays of the utmost importance, especially in the fashion sector. If we think of digital fashion communication, we might think of all the uh, interactions or overlapping areas between information and communication technologies and fashion practices and the fashion industry. But we can distinguish three levels or layers, if you like, in this area. The first one is information communication technologies being extensively adopted and implemented from the very designing phase of a cloth, for instance, uh, up to the production and distribution. Then we might use digital technologies in order to promote, to market uh, a, an item and also in order to uh, somehow change also the physical shop. Think, for instance, the usages of virtual or augmented reality um, magic mirrors in shop. And then uh, we might think of digital technologies being used in order to negotiate what is fashionable and what is not. So in a sense, nowadays, the main symbolic market where we negotiate the fashion trends is the digital market, especially social media. So uh, students in this program will tackle especially the second and the third layer. So ranging from digital marketing, online communication design, uh, e-commerce, uh, up to more general uh, understanding of the uh, social technical environment of digital technology. 
So how did we design the program? Basically, we, we made an extensive benchmark of what was and is currently being offered globally in the English language in the field. Uh, we have analyzed more than 1,400 open positions in the field of digital fashion, and we ran focus groups with people in the company. And all together helped us to design a, an offer which is the first of its kind worldwide uh, and unique uh, under different uh, perspectives. So the two academic partners on the one side is um, Université Paris en Panthéon Sorbonne in Paris. Uh, they have also uh, an agreement with the uh, Institut Français de la Mode in order to offer a common PhD program. And on the Lugano side, it's Università della Svizzera Italiana, with its uh, uh, Faculty of Communication, Culture and Society. So where there's close connection within, between communication on the one side, uh, culture and society on the other side, is investigated. Uh, with its uh, Institute of Digital Technologies for Communication, I'm the director of and uh, we have also a UNESCO chair devoted to tangible and intangible heritage. And more and more fashion is being understood as a major part of the heritage of a country, of a community. The UCI Università della Svizzera Italiana has been recently also featured by international rankings as being one of the most international universities. So in our class of digital fashion communication, we have students from more than 10 different nationalities, and that helps a lot in terms of intercultural exchanges uh, and understanding. So uh, an overview of the program uh, in terms of semesters. So uh, the first two semesters, the first year is spent in uh, Lugano. Then in the third semester, uh, students move to Paris. And then in the fourth semester, they can decide to come back to Lugano to stay in Paris or to go wherever else they like, for instance, to, uh, to do their internship, because in the fourth semester, there is only one compulsory course, which is fully online, and everything else, so the thesis and the uh, internship, can be done uh, everywhere. Um, I don't have time to introduce to you every single course, but at least uh, let's have an helicopter view on them. Uh, so here you see all the courses being organized according to the three main keywords of the program, so digital, fashion and communication. So uh, as you can see in the first semester, we'll have a, a first introductory course, Digital Fashion Communication Introduction, which is taught by myself. Online communication design and digital challenges in marketing and big data. Then we have a major course devoted to fashion communication in general. So digital fashion communication is part of it. And we focus also on sustainable fashion. Um, and then you will uh, tackle issues like intercultural communication, corporate social responsibility, communication law, brand management, and media economics and policy. In the second semester, you will have again a course titled Digital Fashion Communication. In this case, is conversations with industry experts. So you will meet people in the field and discuss with them their major issues, their everyday life, their activities information management and retrieval, usability and digital analytics, e-commerce and cybersecurity. I was mentioning e-commerce as a major trend in, uh, in the fashion uh, market. Think, for instance, of Zalando and many other major players like Amazon and others. Um, augmented and virtual reality for for instance, nowadays, uh, augmented reality is being extensively used, for instance, by fashion apps uh, in the shops and elsewhere. There will be courses on visual fashion communication and argumentation in fashion communication. And then a, a major course on critical consumer behavior, 
statistical data analysis and market system dynamics. In the third semester in, in Paris, uh, there will be a course on digital fashion communication, on social media communication and fashion blogging, and then courses about heritage, tourism and fashion. There are very close connections between uh, tourism on one side and fashion on the other side. A course on fashion industry, a global perspective. A course on social history on fashion and custom and the study tours. In fact, the, the program um, offers study tours uh, during almost every semester, so you will be required to participate in them. Uh, the, the cost of traveling and staying in the destination is not covered by your tuition fee, while, of course, uh, all the uh, activities being uh, done there are included. In the fourth semester, as I was mentioned, there will be a course, Digital Fashion Communication Lab, I'm teaching it as well, uh, and the internship and the master thesis. Of course, there might be small changes in the program and you might decide, for instance, to, uh, to do the internship uh, in between the first and the second year, for instance. So, all in all, uh, graduates will acquire a strong foundation in communication skills as applied specifically to the fashion domain, cutting-edge tools to effectively and efficiently interact within a digital business environment, and uh, very important, the cultural sensitivity needed to communicate in a global market. There are many Logistical details, uh, we are very happy to answer all your questions you might have on the program itself and on, on the details, and many of them are covered, most of them are covered in our uh, webpage. So thank you so much for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions and to meeting you in Lugano next uh, September. So guys, greetings everyone. I'm Dr. Nazaria Kalbaska. I'm the academic coordinator of the master program in digital fashion communication, which is offered as double degree between UZI, uh, Universidad della Svizzera Italiana, and Paris 1, Pantone Sorbonne University in Paris in France. And today I would like to share with you a few details about our master program, especially about the experiences that the students are living while well, here in Lugano, but then we're also going to Paris as well. So I would like to spend a few words on, on the class that, that we have uh, on the students that are coming, where they're from and the backgrounds they, um, they have while joining our master program. By the end of our um, short video today, I would like to have a conversation with our current students. Uh, Linda Leppinen, uh, who will uh, share her experience on attending our master program. Okay, so let me share first a few slides with you. Jeff prepared a few pictures to show you a few faces of, of the students that are attending this uh, our master program. Uh, let me just go to the slides. Um, so you see here uh, on the picture, the first generation of our master students that have joined our masters already two years ago. Uh, so they were actually, and they are still the, the pioneers of uh, attending uh, our master program. So they have believed in what we have on offer. Uh, they didn't have anyone to ask uh, before joining um, this program. And yeah, we, we great, uh, we, we, we are glad to have them still, uh, all of them still following the master course, but also hopefully uh, finishing very soon the master course, right? So you see um, on one picture, the main entrance to the university uh, in Lugano, and we have taken this picture during the first day of our uh, classes. Uh, well, on the second one, uh, you see the picture on the stairs in a uh, in new building of the uh, Sorbonne University, where well, I had a class with the students uh, last semester. Uh, we have 26 students uh, in class and they're coming from 
10 countries, uh, to name a few, Brazil, Croatia, Estonia, Finland, so uh, Linda, she's coming from Finland, uh, France, Germany, India, Italy, Lithuania, and Switzerland. And then all of them, they have very different backgrounds while joining our master program. So someone uh, has, uh, has studied uh, fashion before, like fashion management or even fashion design. Uh, some of them have studied foreign languages or uh, foreign literature. Literature, um, someone had uh, their backgrounds in, uh, in economics or business administration. Uh, as you see, having all those different backgrounds, but also cultural backgrounds, helps uh, them to uh, have very interactive learning, learning experience while in class. Uh, then I would like to share with you a picture with of the uh, second uh, class that joined our master program. So currently they are doing uh, their second semester. So uh, they are attending their classes uh, still in Lugano. And we have 24 students which, uh, that are coming from uh, 14 countries. So we have someone coming from Belgium, Chile, uh, Russia, Turkey, Lebanon, Kenya, uh, again, uh, again, India, uh, you see again, very international class. And this is something we're looking for while recruiting our students for, uh, for the third generation, which you can potentially uh, join soon. Right. Uh, a few other pictures which I wanted to share with you of the uh, Lugano campus, but also of, of our students. In this case, uh, I wanted to uh, share with you that our students, they are managing social media accounts of the master program where they share their experiences. And I invite you to uh, join um, the profiles of the master so you can get a more uh, personal touch. You can, uh, you can contact the students. Uh, they feature their profiles, they tell their stories so they can learn a little bit more about their daily activities. So uh, you can find our master program on Facebook and on Instagram um, with the name of Uzi uh, USI MDFC. And on LinkedIn, we have recently opened the page on LinkedIn uh, and you can find us under Uzi Master in Digital Fashion Communication. Right. So uh, a few more words I wanted to spend on the industry relations and the, let's say, the employability records of uh, our master's uh, program. As you know, it's still a very new master program. We don't have yet students uh, that uh, are working, though we have students that have started doing their internships and we will touch base on this um, in a while. Um, well, during the program, we put our students in, con in constant content contact so it was industry professionals through the required internships and Linda will share uh, a few words about it uh, in a while through guest lectures in class as well as through study tours and company visits. Uh, in the last uh, two years we had uh, the visits in uh, to Spain, Italy, uh, in France and in Switzerland. Right, just a few uh, pictures. So uh, you see on the top uh, on the top corner uh, the uh, students of the first year. Uh, they went to their study tour in Rome, and then uh, they had the visits to uh, the uh, to the Bulgari. Um, then on the uh, on the bottom, you see. Uh, you see a picture during the uh, last Milan Fish Fashion Week where the students had an opportunity uh, to, uh, to attend in a brand at the Marie Claire's office. Uh, well, uh, when you see the group of girls, uh, I, I guess uh, Linda might share it also later on, uh, the group of Actually, two groups of our students from the uh, first generation participated in the Digital Creativity Challenge, which was organized in Lugano uh, during the uh, Fashion Innovation Week. And one of the groups have won the, uh, the prize, Linda was one, one of them. Uh, so they had the most creative idea and they won, they won the prize of the Digital Creativity Challenge. And then they were invited to the uh, exclusive event by uh, La Martina, which was the main sponsor of uh, this digital creativity challenge. And just a few names of the companies uh, from which we have guest speakers. So we had 
uh, company visits. So uh, you can see them here. Some, some of them we have mentioned before. So we had the uh, guest speakers from uh, Gucci and Gas. We had uh, the company visits uh, at Bulgari. Uh, we had a study tour to uh, Zenia factory in Mendrisio. We also had a study tour to Fondazione Zenia in Piemonte in the, in the northern Italy. And you see a few uh, other examples here, right? Uh, so the idea that after um, this master program, the students will work um, as communication managers for the fashion industry in any type of a company, starting from startups or joining big international corporations. That's the idea that, that we had while designing the master program, right? So until very recently, we didn't have the um, track of records, right, of where students are. Uh, potentially can work, but we are preparing them to work as communication managers. We also believe some of our students might join other uh, sectors uh, than, than fashion, uh, but sectors that are similar to, to the fashion domain where they can uh, apply the knowledge that they receive during uh, our master program, for instance, luxury or culture or arts. Right? Um, just a few more words before I will be handling to uh, the word to Linda. Um, the students that we currently have in class in Lugano, so those that are currently finishing our master program, uh, they have started doing their internships, right? So uh, just a few examples on where they're doing uh, their uh, internships. You see them uh, on slides, so it's uh, Koti, uh, it's Hearst Digital, Intercourse, uh, Hugo Boss, Nike, Ivy Nauk, uh, Salvatore Ferragamo, and uh, also digital agencies like Insided in, in Amsterdam. And you see different roles in which, which students have uh, actually uh, taken or the departments in which they're working, right? So most of them are working in either digital marketing or communication. Uh, departments. Uh, we have someone who joined the PR department. We have also a few students that have joined the e-commerce departments. As you know, now e-commerce is booming also because of the uh, COVID-related uh, situation. We have a student that is doing her internship while uh, doing search engine optimization activities and uh, other, um, yeah, other roles and departments, which we can see here. Okay. So, uh, yeah, before I will be uh, handling to, to Linda, uh, I would like to, to invite you to join uh, our master pro program, be part of it, joining the third generation of our students. You can find all the information on this website, which is uh, slash mdfc. And let me just stop the presentation here. Okay, so I hope to see Linda. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Linda. Uh, thank you very much, first of all, for joining us and volunteering to uh, to be part of this uh, video registration. Um, as yeah, I, I have um, briefly uh, asked you before. Uh, can you please um, tell us first of all where you're from and what you've studied before and why you have decided to join our master program? Okay, so I'm Linda, I'm 22 and I'm originally from Finland. Uh, I lived and I studied my high school uh, diploma in Singapore, after which I studied my BA in Adyed, uh, Istituto Europeo di Design in Milan, in Italy. Uh, I studied fashion marketing communication and I majored in communication, which then uh, made me, uh, within my last year of studies, uh, I was very keen on social media and e-commerce and visual merchandising. And so I started looking for a master's program within Italy um, that would have these kind of aspects covered within it. And I found uh, the Uzi uh, page and university. I had not heard about it. And then uh, looking at the contents of the courses, uh, it is extremely varied and very uh, in detail also within the courses. Uh, you get an idea of a lot of different aspects of the industry, which I had not um, looked at while studying fashion uh, at yet. Um, 
And so I was really interested in just getting to know more the digital part, which I had not known. And so I applied and I've been very, very satisfied. Great. Thank you, Linda. Uh, can you share with us what you're doing now uh, in your in your internship, right? So I'm working as the CRM, uh, Customer Relationship Management and Marketing Intelligence Specialist intern at Intercos, which is a global manufacturer of cosmetics, a licensed manufacturer or um, a contract manufacturer. And so I, my role, uh, even though being suspended right now, uh, is to um, keep in contact with customers and with uh, the sales personnel of our company who go to the customer meetings and then uh, get data through surveys on what is happening within the, the industry and to get trends and to then uh, be able to foresee the future in a way to predict trends and what is going to happen within industries, within fashion, within art, within culture, within economics, within politics and in makeup and in cosmetics to then be able to make better um, collections and products for our customers. Right, great. Thank you for sharing this. Uh, maybe I think we have a few more minutes. Can you share with us on uh, what, what you're writing your master thesis on? So I'm writing my master's thesis on uh, the topic of cosmetics as well. Uh, so I'm writing it about how digitalization has actually affected the role of imitation, which was a very big part of the course of uh, social history of fashion and custom in Paris on the third semester. Um, and I was inspired by this to look at how digitalization and digital transformation has transferred the way that we imitate others in terms of beauty and how this affects our patterns of consumption of cosmetics. So I'm really looking at the fact of how ideas of aesthetics change through digital and how it changes through the different aspects of the economy and of the the way that people think and how we see beauty differently online as versus to offline and how that affects the the choices we make in our consumption. Great topic. Yeah, we're, sure. we're looking forward to, to your master thesis discussion, hopefully very soon, no? Very soon. You have to concentrate now on it. So yes. I think my, my last question uh, is related to the experience you have left while doing our master program. Uh, can you recall one experience you would like to share with the guys? Honestly, it's quite hard to choose one. I was thinking <laughs> of, of so many, uh, but I honestly think that the study tour that we did to Spain was incredible. Going to the Inditex factory was very, very insightful to actually see how the whole system works, to get to know and to talk to the people that work there, but also taking part in the fashion uh, in the in the um, in the uh, fashion innovation week event in Lugano was amazing to get to talk with the the CEO of La Martina and to get to know to really put hands on and to compete in in a way to come up with something and to apply what we had learned in class. It, it was really interesting and really nice. Thank you, Linda, very much mm -hmm. uh, for joining us, but also yeah, to uh, share the, the great experiences you have lived here in the uh, master program. Guys, feel free to contact myself or Linda if you have any further questions, but also feel free to uh, join the uh, master program on our social media accounts and then you will see other uh, profiles of other students just ask them questions ask them about the experience I'm sure they will be happy to uh, to share what, what 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 they're doing at Uzi and then what they will be doing uh, in Sorbonne University and yeah hopefully we'll, we'll see you in class in September thank you bye Welcome back. Thank you for watching this presentation of the Master in uh, uh, Digital Fashion Communication. Uh, we received a lot of questions. Uh, now, to help me answer all uh, your doubts, uh, Lorenzo Cantoni, director uh, of the program, 
professor Hello. at the Faculty of everybody. Communication, Culture and Society, uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Kalbaska, uh, coordinator of the program. They will help me out uh, uh, answering all the questions you got. Please keep sending in questions through the chat uh, that you see below the video you're watching. Uh, and then we will, everybody will see them and we will answer. And you have another option to send in questions that maybe uh, are more uh, specific. There's a form below at the bottom of the page. This form will stay uh, online for the entire week and beyond, uh, while the chat will uh, end at the, at the end of this live session. So keep sending in questions and uh, now let's dive uh, into what you are asking. So the first question came from Rachel. And it's a very uh, uh, important question uh, related to, to, to the news, basically. She's asking, the fashion industry will probably face a crisis after coronavirus. Uh, and her doubt is, is it worth to pursue a career in the field now? Thank you. And um, Professor Cantoni, I will let you answer this. Yeah, thank you, Rachel, for, for putting on the table this. Very important issue. It's clear that the fashion industry, as well as many other industries, are facing huge problems nowadays. But at the same time, it has become even more clear that people able to manage digital communication and, in general, digital technologies are the people who are right now uh, needed desperately by, by the industry. So uh, all the uh, fashion industry has moved dramatically to online communication, to e-commerce, to face uh, the uh, crisis of the pandemic. And so people like you, people studying digital fashion communication, will be exactly the people needed by the industry. So it's true there is a crisis, but it's true even more now because of the crisis, this type of training and mm -hmm. preparation is what uh, fits the needs and matches the needs of the industry. Okay, thanks. Related to this question, uh, Francesca, who sent in several questions, uh, is asking, uh, let's say uh, I will not make to get a job in the fashion industry. Uh, does this program uh, prepare uh, graduates for other industries as well? Professor? Yeah, I, I think... Uh, this is a, a very uh, relevant question we, uh, we receive many times. So in general, if you think of a master program, I mean, it's a very important decision for your life. You might choose uh, a, what we call a, a, an horizontal master program or a so-called vertical master program. So in horizontal means that uh, it is not focused on a specific uh, field uh, or industry or sector, while a vertical is focused on a specific sector. For instance, at UZI, we have vertical master programs in tourism, in fashion, and in other industries. What is clear based on all uh, those programs is that around half of the people starting that program will end up uh, quite soon in the industry because they love the industry and they get a job immediately there. But other people will, during the, the period, or because of chances they get uh, uh, outside of the program, uh, they will enter similar sectors or fields. So if we think of the uh, Master in Digital Fashion Communication, for sure the luxury sector or the cultural heritage sector or the tourism sector. So other similar sectors uh, might definitely be of interest and might find your training perfectly fit in their needs. Okay, thank you. Then uh, again, Nadia, with... you, you want to add something to? Yeah. I think that that was a good answer to this. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, again with Francesca, and she's asking uh, uh, a question that is linked to another uh, one. Again, is is this one? She is uh, uh, quite worried about the semester in Paris. And she's asking whether Uzi uh, will help uh, will help in finding an apartment or an accommodation. And then uh, Buyo asked the same question, but for the uh, two semesters in Lugano. So maybe uh, Dr. Kalbaska uh, has some uh, uh, information on uh, possibilities of apartment in Paris. Uh, do you so know? So I'll start first with Paris, right? Okay. 
um, let's say the students, they will be looking for departments uh, themselves, both mm -hmm. in Lugano and in Paris. Okay. But uh, at both institutions, we have the services that uh, can be helpful. So they will provide you with the links uh, on which you can go uh, and find for an apartment. So, for instance, in Lugano, there are quite active uh, Facebook pages where the students exchange uh, exchange the, the apartments while they they live in apartments, so you can uh, take over. While in Paris, uh, the university will provide you with the links to the agencies that are renting the apartments, but also the links to the forums where you can find the apartment. But you will need to do it on uh, on your own. Okay, yeah, thanks yeah. for, what, what, for what we have seen, maybe if, if I could add a couple of words, what we have seen, there is a huge solidarity between and among students. So uh, you might ask former students, you reach out them through social media channels, and they will be more than happy to share tricks and tips, and uh, in some cases to, to leave your the apartment to you when they move to Paris or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. And it also, while you will be going to Paris, you will be going there as a class. Mm -hmm. So potentially you might look an apartment with some other colleagues with whom, from, from your class, or you might share an apartment together. Or if you have some friends that were doing an Erasmus in Paris, so you can contact them and then through them find, uh, find a place to stay. But we advise students for both while they're moving to Lugano or while they will be going to Paris to start looking for an apartment as soon as possible. As you know, that's one of the hot issues, finding a place to stay. So you will be advised on, on, on starting as early as possible with this. Okay, yeah, the, thanks for, for the hint. It's really interesting that after one year uh, studying here in Lugano, uh, of course, moving to Paris, uh, you're moving together with the classmates that you know already from uh, at least 12 months, so it's an easier way to, to find a place. Thanks, let's go on. Um, let me, a lot of questions are coming in. Uh, okay, so Francesca again is, uh, let's go uh, chronologically, she's asking whether uh, classes will be in English in Paris as well. Uh, Nadia, maybe uh, you can yeah. answer this. Yeah, so all the classes of the master program are in English. So the classes in Lugano and in Paris will be in English. If you actually master French, for instance, you can take your elective courses in French in Paris, right? But the mandatory classes are all in English and you will have a range of classes in English as electives also provided in Sorbonne University. Okay, thanks. And the next one uh, again is uh, how long does it take to graduates to find their first job? Uh, I mean, this is a, a new program and we, Professor Cantoni, can uh, say a few words on uh, the general uh, numbers of the university. Yeah, yeah, we, we do not have uh, yet graduates. We will have soon, uh, in September, the first one. But uh, in general, uh, the UZI's experience is pretty consistent all throughout our programs. And within the first year um, of graduation, 93.2% of our graduates get a job with an average time of, on, of only 2.7 months to get the first, the first position. So it, it's really in terms of uh, employability and uh, getting on the job market, uh, it's really fast. So, and we would anticipate uh, both because of the specific industry as well as because of the training about digital technologies, even faster um, tracks in the future. Perfect. I uh, might add something about the languages. So it's true that we, we are not asking uh, you to master uh, any other language uh, than English. And so all the classes and compulsory activities are in English. But that said, we believe that our program being placed in an Italian-speaking part of Switzerland and having six months in, in France should help you to uh, master also, uh, la lingua italiana e la langue française. Uh, because, uh, I mean, all the three languages are super important in the fashion industry. So uh, it would be a fantastic outcome for you and of the program to master three languages 
all of them collectively so important, seminal for, for the fashion domain. Thanks. Then we got one question through the, uh, the web form on the page. The question is from, uh, comes from Olga, and she is asking a very practical question, but very important, of course. Uh, <clears throat> she wrote us, uh, I knew the master through the uh, website of the uh, Sorbonne University, and the question is, should I apply through them, or should I apply through, through Uzi? So, Nadia, maybe you can uh, say something about this? Yes, uh, so you can apply at, um, through the websites of both institutions. Um, if, so if you decide to apply through the website of the Sorbonne University, you can uh, apply through them, then they will pass the documents to us, or you can do it vice versa, uh, doing the applications through the um, website of UZI. Um, in any case, you will need to have uh, to fill in your application at the website of UZI. So uh, we invite you to do it uh, straight away from, the, um, from our website. Okay, yeah, because in the end uh, you will pay Uzi, so the tuition fee is paid always to Uzi, and we pay. Uh, I mean, Uzi pays Sorbonne University, so but uh, the tuition fee is always paid directly to Uzi by all the students. Perfect. Okay, um, another question from Sophia uh, uh, through the chat is: How is it going to be uh, the master situation? Uh, in this actual situation, I think she, she meant. Are you going to make changes in order to face the after coronavirus? Postpone the beginning of the master or starting online classes uh, and move in the second semester? Thanks. A lot of options uh, straight from the question. Uh, so, Professor Cantoni, uh, can you say something about this? Yeah, thank you for, thank you for the question. I'm uh, currently the pro-rector for education and students' experience, and this is, I mean, something which keeps us uh, I mean, active also during the nights to reflect on how to, to organize. So what's very clear is that uh, we have committed ourselves as UZI uh, to run the semester. And we, we, we were able to demonstrate in the, in the current semester, we moved uh, from the face-to-face -face training to the online training without losing any single class. So not even one hour of class has been lost. So this is something we are pretty good uh, in doing. Uh, for the next semester, of course, all of us are very optimistic and uh, we, we hope we will be able to start uh, business as usual in the classes. But we, have, uh, already, uh, we are already prepared to uh, face uh, different scenarios. So, no one knows which one will be the, cor the correct one, but uh, be assured that uh, under any circumstances, so of course, if it's a full lockdown, uh, we will uh, be able to run the semester or part of the semester uh, fully online. But there might be uh, other scenarios, for instance, uh, requiring specific distances between the students or only a few days in the campus. But so we are designing all the possible scenarios, uh, but uh, we are committed to run the semester without losing any, any single class and the, any single student. So in some cases that might be connected with the student moving from a country mm -hmm. which temporarily, for instance, closes the boundaries. And so it's not possible to fly in uh, to Switzerland. We won't, uh, I mean, no one will be left uh, behind. So we will manage uh, this. Okay, a uh, very thorough answer as well. Uh, Bo, uh, uh, Manon Bo wrote us through the chat. Uh, he's uh, saying hello first. Thank you for the interesting presentation. Uh, I have a question concerning the official okay. document we have to provide. Due to the COVID-19 situation, one of my exams has been reported to the end uh, of August. Is it a problem if we cannot provide the exmatriculation and bachelor? I can say I can answer this. Uh, um, so basically, uh, because of the of this situation, uh, we as a as a university uh, took some uh, steps in order to help students uh, uh, with these kind of difficulties, administrative and their former uh, academic programs maybe will be delayed a little bit. Uh, in terms of application in general, we uh, set a new deadline, uh, the end of May for students. 
that need a visa to come to Switzerland and the end of August for students that are mainly EU nationals uh, and so they do not need a visa to come to Switzerland. This in terms of a general application. In terms of uh, mm, finishing or getting your graduation from the bachelor degree, you will have a few more uh, months, basically. You can apply even if you, did not, if you have not finished your bachelor yet, and you will have time until the end of the, of the year, until the end of December. Uh, by that time, you must have finished your bachelor, otherwise you will not be allowed to uh, attend the exam session and you cannot stay, I will say, on track with the program. This is valid as well, it's not in the question, but uh, in order to give you uh, uh, global information, it's the same for the uh, English certificate you must submit, it's one of the required documents. You have more time for this as well. We know that examination centers are now closed, so exams are off. Uh, there will be some uh, backlog when uh, everything starts again. Uh, and so we are considering this as well. Uh, if you want to add something, uh, Dr. Kalbaska or Professor Cantoni, otherwise we can go on. Not just in any case, if you have any further questions related to the admission process, please write us an email, we're answering. It may be not day and night, no, not day and night, but during the day for sure, so you'll receive the answer during the same day. Uh, you will find the email on, on the university website. So any any kind of doubt you have, please just let us know and then we will find out the solution for you. Okay, perfect. Uh, then Anya, uh, she's asking, she's saying hello as well, and I would like to know if there's any limit to number of students. Uh, then it's up to you, maybe Professor Cantoni. Yeah, yeah uh, there, is, mm, there isn't any official uh, numerous clauses, uh, but that said, uh, we want to to keep the program uh, like a family, so uh, in a condition uh, in which uh, people know each other, the classes are manageable, also the ratio between the professors and the students is optimal. Uh, so. Our, uh, our goal is uh, somewhere between 25 and, and 30 or around those numbers. So it's not going to be a massive number and this is not our goal. So it's, uh, we, we want really to ensure uh, the possibility for students to, to stay within an optimal number. Uh, of course, some classes will be, uh, in, um, will be done or taken if you like uh, with other master programs. So you might have uh, classes with more students participating because they are shared such classes by, by more than one master program. And again, this is super interesting because you, you see and meet students with different backgrounds, interests, and uh, study trajectories. But in general, the class itself, uh, our goal is uh, yeah around 25 uh, plus or minus. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, we answered to all the questions through the chat. Um, and uh, during your answers, we uh, incidentally <laughs> answered to another question through the form, uh, which I remember will stay online uh, um, uh, for maybe the entire week and beyond. Yes, Professor? Maybe it's like, uh, there might have been a question about uh, what about the third semester if someone could decide not to go to Paris? Uh, and the answer is not. So uh, if the, the program requires that all the students uh, go uh, also to Paris for one semester, the only exception might be in case of a full lockdown. So in, again, in that case, if some students cannot reach Paris because uh, there are uh, health-related issues uh, or regulations, there's another case. But in general, uh, I mean, it's compulsory to stay one year in Lugano, first two semester, one semester in Paris, while in the fourth semester there is no requirement in terms of where you stay. You're, you were right, thanks a lot, because I missed one question. Uh, and there's, while you were answering, a new one, uh, probably the last right. one, uh, arrived, uh, and it's from Matilde. Uh, she says, I, will there be books to pick up or will be material online uh, and provided by the university? 
So, uh, Dr. Kalbaska, maybe you can answer can this. Can you please repeat again the question? I, I didn't hear you well. Yeah, will there be books to pick up or will the material be only on, just online and be provided by university throughout the program? This is the question. Okay, so let's say in case the, uh, we will have uh, in-class teaching, in-campus teaching, uh, then potentially you might pick up the books from the university library, which is a great library we have on campus, right? Some of the materials will be provided online by, by the professors, but it's up to the professor in every single course um, in the way they, they would like to provide you with materials. In case the classes will be uh, online, then all the materials will be available online for you study. Okay, thanks. Uh, we are uh, uh, arrive we arrived to the, to the end of this presentation. Um, thanks again for watching. Thanks to uh, the director, Professor Cantoni, uh, and to the coordinator, Dr. Kalbaska, for joining us and answering all your uh, detailed and interesting questions. Please uh, keep watching uh, uh, the, the presentation again so that you have all the uh, details. Uh, keep sending in questions through the form that I remember you will stay there uh, for a little while. Uh, and we will answer the question as study advisory service. We will forward the specific questions to the director and the coordinator. I hope uh, we helped you in uh, solving a few doubts. And uh, I will say goodbye to you and hopefully we'll see you in September. Thanks again to Professor Cantonio and Dr. Vabasca. Goodbye. Thank you. And you everyone. goodbye. Thanks for your time and interest. Bye. Looking Bye. forward to meeting you. See you. Bye. Thank you.